Hal here, and I just want to take a minute to talk a little, about, a little bit about Onyx. Um, been using it now for about a year, deer hunting, moose hunting, turkey hunting, all of that, and uh, really come to really like it. I like the uh, I like the satellite imagery mainly because I can locate hidden fields, you know, for turkey hunting, the, the bogs for moose hunting. Uh, you can tell the different stage of cuts up here in the big woods for deer, whether it's clear cuts, select cuts, see the skid roads and it's really a big help I found coming out at night, you know, it's it's uh can really tell you like the easiest way to get out, you know, if you got a couple miles a couple hours to walk out. And uh so anyways, got the app on my phone, got the uh the chip in my GPS and uh I'm good to go. So uh not only that, it's used by 4600 game wardens across the country, which is pretty incredible. And uh Bureau of Land Management Forest Service, wildlife biologists, and all that. They all use it, so I guess it's uh, something you ought to be using too. So anyways, go to uh, onyx.com, and you punch in the promo code BWB, and you're going to get a 20% discount. Good hunting. This is the Big Woods Bucks podcast. Come explore the big woods and timber in North America with your host, Maine Master Guide and Deer Tracking Expert Hal Blood. Listen to Hal and co-hosts Lee Libby and Joe Cruzy as they unlock the secrets of Big Woods Whitetails. Each episode will provide valuable insights in the tried and true system Hal has used for the last 40 years to scout, locate, and hunt mature Big Woods Bucks. Listen and laugh as the crew discusses Hal's legendary adventures and learn how to apply a lifetime's worth of lessons from the big woods to your own hunting and outdoor adventures. Welcome to the Big Woods Bucks podcast. I'm your host, Hal Blood, and we're over in the beautiful Rangeley, Maine again, sitting here with Joe Cruzy. Hello. And the mayor of Rangeley, Lee Libby. (laughs) Howdy. And uh, team member Matt Breton's with us. He's representing today Big Woods and BHA, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. You got it. Your homework paid off, Hal. That's right. Thanks for having us. Yeah. He's such a good listener. He is. Yeah. yeah. Thank well, uh, you for calling Rangeley beautiful. Yeah. It's the it first is. time you've said that. Yeah, it is beautiful over Usually here. Usually you call it a yuppie hangout. Well, or a little like too that. much traffic over here for me and traffic. Joe. We rolled into town today. We thought we'd go downtown Freeport. Find a parking spot <laughs> yeah. on Main Street right now. I, I did. We, we, we <laughs> lucked out. We lucked out parking here. It was good. Yeah. 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 It was unbelievable. We pulled into town. I'd, I yeah. never would have thought it'd be the, I mean, I knew it was busy, but. Yeah. Crazy. It's crazy popping. Yeah. yeah. We need it, though. It gets us through fall. And, uh, yeah. We got a yeah. great it's venue it's here. We're at the yeah. Furbush Brew House. Yeah. Furbush yeah. Brew right House. Right on Main yeah. Street. Awesome yeah. food. Used to be the old North Country Inn. The old, yeah, North Country Inn. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Had some good food. Get ready for this. Yeah. Roof yeah. don't leak. You know why? Your competitor <laughs> did it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who, who got the job? <laughs> <laughs> Lee's competitor put the roof yeah. on. It's in good shape. Oh, yeah. But yeah, we're looking out a window here <laughs> onto the lake. Nice setting here. Yeah. 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 Good and, place. So, and Matt, what's, what's. Wait a minute. I'm sorry. Now, I'm happy to report that Lee has got his Tito's and crayons sitting right in front of yeah. him. Yeah. Little, yeah. Looks yeah. like a little maybe. That's little why bit. we started 10 minutes late. Not yeah. too bad. No, couldn't too start bad. today. I can't till. believe I walked in and you didn't have it ready for me. <laughs> well, you didn't know if I was going to show Ru- up. Rumor yeah. was you weren't we, even going to make it. So. We yeah. didn't know. We came here to Rangeley, right. and we got to blow your phone up. You don't answer your phone. You don't return texts. You're, he's like, a bi- a, you're like a teenager for He's a busy out. man. Look how true. It's look how busy it is I out there. I didn't get one phone call. <laughs> you're such yeah. a liar. <laughs> <laughs> you're full of crap. But anyway, you made it, so we're going to give you credit yeah. for that. Right. So we, we got to turn it over to Matt so he can explain a little bit about yeah. backcountry hunters and anglers and what we're doing here today and what the organization's about. Well, the organization's about uh, protecting our public lands. And in New England, you know, 90, 90% of Maine is privately owned. And so when you look outside and see how busy it is, uh, we did a hike to hunt this morning. We went up Bald Mountain. Good training for the fall. Uh, it was busy. There's a ton of people out there, and people are looking to get outside and do some stuff in this pandemic era, and uh, I think it highlights the importance of public lands. 
where people can go. Everyone owns them. You know, every citizen in America, every visitor to America owns public lands. And so um, we've partnered with High Peaks Alliance, who's a local re regional conservation organization, the Trust for Public Land, which is a national organization, to uh, promote some of their activities. And, and Big Woods, thankfully, Big Woods Bucks has jumped on board. Um, the, the current project is the Kingfield Town Forest, which is Shiloh Pond, and that's close to fully funded which will be a great asset for that community. Um, there's some bigger projects in the works, 7,000-acre uh, conservation easements that protect land for us to track big bucks on. Uh, I don't want to go and run into a property line where someone's posted it, and, and so that's why I got involved with this organization. After hunting out west, you know, you go out there and hunt in a national forest. I think, I think everyone here has hunted on national forests out yeah. west. Yeah. And so... I thought it was a pretty good fit for New England to uh, protect our tracking heritage. Right. Sure. Yeah, the conversation you and I were just having, you were telling me how you got involved, and I mean, it, you just called someone up and say, hey, I want to do something, and um, not everyone can say they do that, and it, it, it's what, what it takes to make it all happen. It doesn't just happen by accident. So. No, and it's amazing once you get involved in the, the nonprofit conservation community, how many people are out there working on this, and, and when you step in, the, the impact you get to have, uh, and I think... Hunters have sort of rested on their laurels buying licenses and, and not jumping in a ton into the conservation world. You know, back in the early 1900s, there were a lot of big hunters who were conservationists. Aldo Leopold, Theodore Roosevelt, George Bird Grinnell, all those folks, Gifford Pinchot. Um, and we lost that heritage somewhere along the way and, and kind of got used to just paying our license fees and, and taking advantage of it. And I think now's the time for, for hunters to step back up and really be the lead on conserving big chunks of woods and con conservation doesn't mean we don't cut it or we don't snowmobile on it or anything you know there's a lot of uses out there that can happen but um we have to have the land underfoot first before we decide how we use it yeah i think the big thing for hunters getting involved is nowadays the way the land is changing hands in maine it may not be too long before some of these other groups might end up with some land and and they end up buying hunting from it so. exactly that's a uh, that's a real concern, I would think. Well, look at the uh, the Nature Conservancy piece. You know, Nature Conservancy to me was was always you know access and and hunting's always allowed, but the piece over by us has got quite a few restrictions on it. And yeah, and I mean, you they haven't out and out said you can't hunt, but I mean, you can't take a dog, so you can't go if you got a dog you want to bird hunt or exactly. you go bear hunting with dogs or anything. Right. You can't do things like that. So Yeah, and, and I think I think we can it's easy to just dismiss those folks, but I think if we work with them and speak up, we can we can change their minds because a lot of the TNC property I hunt around in Vermont is open to hunting and they don't have a ton of restrictions. And so I think rather than just saying, Oh, they're opposed to us, the more we're in bed with them, the better we're gonna get along. That yeah. may not always be true. But well, we were. No. I was quite surprised that they did that on the Nature Conservancy that they bought over around our area, around Spencer and there. They bought two, three townships because they've got a lot of land in northern Maine, and it's all open. I mean, there's, there's bear hunt. They, they actually have bear baits for bear hunting because it's part of the north Maine woods. So I was surprised when they did it this way over, yeah. over our way. I forget what the reason was, too. There was someone that was involved. Oh, I, I think it was where the land came from. He had restrictions that he put on it maybe beforehand. Mm. Yeah. I don't know. They bought the land from... Uh, was it from the timber company? <clears throat> yeah, Plum Creek. They bought that from Plum I thought there Creek. was a contingency. For, I, I could be wrong on well, it. Well, one of the reasons they wanted it was because that number five bog is like an ecological preserve. It's got yep. them pitcher plants, and it's got a lot of that stuff. But I don't know if they thought, I don't know why they would think dogs or anything else is going to bother yeah. that. They ain't going to go in there, yeah. you know. Yeah, they didn't have a bear hunter sitting at the table with them. So that's what we need to do is, is right. pair, pair up and get along. And if we yeah. agree that we need to save the land... <clears throat> And more hunters get involved, we're going to have a voice that says, "Hey, let's let some bear hunting happen here." You know, right. yeah. So, and what is the reason behind the dog thing? I mean, I don't all, know. Of They'd, all things, you know. Well, it was basically animals. They started out. It was, you know, if you read the list, it's no, horse no horseback riding. So mm, you right. can't go in there with horses because everybody thought that'd be pretty cool if you got 
remote land and you can go in by horseback would be really cool, but they didn't even want that. Hmm. That's and interesting. And it turned into the dog, so it's basically animals, it sounds like. Yeah. yeah I don't know if they think they're going to spread something onto the land. Into the, well, I, I don't just, know. I, I still go back, you know, conserving land is still a touchy subject. It is. It is. You know? and so in, in a lot of people are going to say, well, if they don't want dogs in there and they don't want horses in there, then, you know, they just want to control the land, and eventually they're not going to let us hunt in there. So that's a big thing that's got to be right up front with... All of it. And yeah. I think you're right. You're getting, how do you say it? Bring your enemies closer, you know? Yeah. When and I think not, not thinking of them and not thinking of them as enemies no, 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 is but, vital. Because yeah. that's, I think that's what's happened is it's us versus them. And, and if we're all on the same page and talk together and work together, we can come to some mutual agreement that says, hey, you know what? Hunting is pretty light on the landscape when you compare it to a lot of other, say, motorized uses, mm-hmm. you know? I, I don't know if you've ever listened to Lee, but, but he says some pretty controversial things. Well, that's so. good. <laughs> but, are we, but, are, but, but are we going to be able to ATV? And I mean, if the if the taxpayers of the state of Maine, in a sense, own this land, should should well, it be open to anything? Well, that's a, the taxpayer land is differently. That's the public land. Well, that's what we're talking about. Well, are we about. talking about public land? Yeah, and I think it depends on, on prior uses. So I know, and Brent's coming on in a couple minutes, but um, High Peaks Alliance has always been supportive of ATV riding. And so I think, you know, there's there's multiple layers to all these things, previous conservation easements, um, other prior uses, preferential uses, um, like a ni- National Wildlife Refuge prioritizes hunting and fishing. And so there's some, some give and take that goes on, but I think... Any of that is better than someone buying it up and putting a bunch of houses. I think we've all lost places to hunt that have houses on them. Can't go there at all anymore. Or locking it up and, and keeping it their own private hunting preserve. So, Well, you know, when, when uh, uh, BPL and Trout Unlimited partnered up and got that 8,000 acres out behind Parlin Mountain, all the, all the ponds and then Cold Stream, it's the Cold Stream forest piece. When that happened, I remember a lot of locals were – upset and they made comments like oh great it's just going to be ll bean fly fishermen in here now and country club this and that well what a lot of people don't realize that haven't seen development and everything else how it works is a group from new york uh fly fishing club or something could have come in there they paid eight million dollars for the land Mm -hmm. a group in new york could come in and scoop up eight million dollar piece of land like nothing and gate the whole thing off, and then it's all theirs, and there's nothing you can do about it. Right. And they'd have been, you could walk into the ponds if it's 10 acres or more, but, you know, how many people are going to walk miles into a pond? So I was real supportive of that myself. I, I thought it was a great thing and a great uh, partnership, which it, it did turn out to be, and now it's there forever. Yeah. You know, and, and I think overall, though, I wouldn't say they have restrictions because we're still allowed to run snowmobile trails on it they still have the four-wheelers coming through there it's a bit regulated but you know you expect that right um but at least we know it's always going to be there for us to use forever and ever right so. and i think it's it's not just our generation but what's what's going to happen two generations from from now is that land going to be there for people to hunt on then because if the number one reason people choose to stop hunting often is related to access if they don't have access they stop hunting so we got to have places for people to hunt if we want hunters around. Now, a lot of times when the woods are crowded, like Lee talks about, maybe maybe you don't want as many hunters around. But <laughs> I'm not saying anything. <laughs> all, all, all of a sudden, the controversy switch has been flipped uh, off. Yeah. If he doesn't say anything, he can't say anything wrong. Yeah. No, that's right. No, I just it's always going to be a tough sell. It is. It's always going to be a tough sell. No, I think there's a, a need for it. I just I would. The, you'd really got to convince everybody that that's going to stay open, and yeah, We'd, and you know it's like anything. The people with the most time have the most time to complain and yeah, do whatever. And us guys out there that are trying to make a living and support other families, we don't well, always have time to go fight the fight. We just hope for the best, you right? Know? But I it's think called, that's that's why more hunters need to get involved in oh, stuff yeah. like this and, yeah. and weigh in. You know we. We spend we raise a lot of money through Pittman Robertson Act money, so that's rifle sales, ammunition sales, our excise tax of eleven percent that gets turned into to government money. 
uh, the Dingle Johnson stuff, and then the recent passage of the Great American Outdoors Act. That was a um, big one. LWCF is fully funded, and that's oil and gas lease money from offshore drilling. So those dollars are coming to us, and so we better be prepared to use them. And, mm. and, and if we're at the table and can talk about keeping hunting as a, a use on the land, we're going to be way better off. Right. No, yeah, I agree. That was a, really an encouraging thing that, you know, the, outdoor, the Outdoors Act was bipartisan. It was, you know, it was a huge majority. Oh, yeah. There was no question. So it, it was a good signal of, of what people's feelings are, at least that everyone recognizes we need these public lands. And, and uh, you know, you mentioned Roosevelt in the beginning. I mean, that really, that, to me, that's what I always think about is, is you know, he was kind of like, because of the position he was in, um, he was instrumental in starting the whole movement of, oh, of yeah. conservation. And when you go out west, especially, yeah, and and see what's out there because of what he did that long ago, right? And it wasn't all of all him, but 640 million acres is is our public trust. As an American citizen, we have 640 million acres to go hunt on, mostly. Yeah. I mean, that's some national parks have some rules, and, and you got to that's okay. But I mean, that's a lot of acreage that the average mm. guy can access. And Absolutely. so I know I've benefited from it out in Colorado and Wyoming and, and even you know, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So I feel lucky to have those public lands to hunt on. And, and when you can take a buck or a bull off, off those lands, uh, it feels extra special. Yeah. yeah and Maine's always been a, um, what's made it special is its access because of the large timber tracks. But we all see that changing yeah. so quickly right now. So. It's a it's something to think about, and I think we just need to have those conversations and, you know, beat guys like Lee over the head for a little while and get them yeah. to see our way. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> couple no. couple Tito's in, we should be all set. Wow, that's when it gets hard. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go there, uh, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna turn my mic over to Jess Martin, who's a, a BHA local here in in the Rangeley region, and uh, she's done some cool stuff. She's quite a hunter, so uh, nice. be nice to her. Yeah, Lee. okay. All right, it's easy. good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know her, Lee? No. Oh, okay. okay. So. Got a new friend. Lee told us he knows everyone in Rangeley. No, that's yeah. not true. I got my cheat sheet. <clears throat> You're a public landowner, too? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I got my you. fancy shirt, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to have to speak up a little closer to your mic. Okay. Right? Th- perfect. Perfect. Sounds good. All right. Jess Martin. Tell us a little bit about yourself, Jess. About myself? Yeah. Well, I've been living in the Rangeley region for five years, doing combat hunting with guys like you. (laughs) (laughs) Fun, ain't it? (laughs) Yeah, I love it. Every time somebody cuts me off, I'm like, is that a Lee Libby? (laughs) You know, that's like the third time that someone's mentioned today, Lee cutting people off. Yeah, (laughs) It sounds like a trend. I think he's like like a... Stalker or something. He yeah. goes and scopes out people's vehicles and figures out how we get ahead of them. I know. Them. I'm thinking yeah. about getting a rental truck this fall. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Go incognito. Yeah. yeah. So like where did you come from? I came from the Winthrop area. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Just had to get out of there and get north, right? Yeah, Big Woods. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Nice. Uh, How'd you do last year? How'd I do last year? Oh, my goodness. You don't even want to know. Yeah, I do. Why well, you asked. <laughs> I mean, I was successful out west. I got a nice mule deer, yeah. and then I still had 10 days to hunt when I came home, and I, I, everybody always says this, but I swear I missed the biggest buck of my life. No. <laughs> Portage Brook? Yeah, Portage Brook. <laughs> How'd you know? Uh, oh. I love when Lee names specific places. It must drive I'm people crazy. I'm trying to turn that place into I-495. Na- and That's yeah. Is that, yeah. Portage Brook. <laughs> Everybody so, knows where that is now. So have you been hunting since you were young? Yeah, I've been hunting since I was Grew young. up in a hunting family? I did. My dad's a taxidermist. He ran uh, Miranda Cook Taxidermy yeah. out of Winthrop area. Okay. Nice. Yeah. So. You don't really have a choice when you grow up in that kind of household, huh? My favorite part of the day was when his customers would drop off deer and I'd get to sneak into the shop and listen to the hunting stories. So. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Now I get to listen to people like you. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, just don't believe everything you hear, right? Uh-huh. I don't. <laughs> Especially when Lee says it, right? Oh, 
So tell us about what you're doing here to help the, uh, the public lands. Public lands. Well, I heard about backcountry hunters and anglers when I started looking into doing trips out west for whitetail and mule deer and learning more about public lands and access. And it got me thinking about Maine and how it's so privately owned and, you know, what, what is the Maine BHA team doing here, you know, to help sustain wild places and wild things and hunting access. And so I decided to get more involved and learn just more about behind the scenes and what backcountry hunters um, were doing as an organization here in New England. So I got to meet people like Matt and I wanted to be more active so nice but i think back to i have a deer on the wall of my house that's 30 years old and it was shot in the rangeley region and four years ago i shot a buck that was probably 200 yards from where this deer had been shot and i thought well it's crazy crazy that i still have access to this area and it's still producing you know good hunting habitat and good animals and i you know, have the deer on my in my kitchen and the other deer mounted in my living room, and I just think it's amazing that that amount of time can pass. So, I feel like it's important to sit down and think about well, what's going to be here 30 years from now. Right. Did you get that bucket, Porter Brook. Oh yeah. Portage, <laughs> Portage Brook. Oh Portage. No, oh, yeah. P- Porter Brook is probably some secret spot that Hal knows about. Yeah. So. It's really good because you're you're uh, um, you seem like you're quite young. I'm not going to ask you how old you are, but for the younger generation <laughs> to get involved is great. I mean, that's what it takes yeah. because right. it is um, you know like Lee was saying, everyone's busy, everyone's got things going on, and anyone can find an excuse not to get involved. Right. Oh, and yeah. uh, you know, it takes people like you and Matt that take up their valuable time and put effort into it. Right. I mean, it, it's comes easy to me hunting is my passion so you know you kind of got to shut me up when it comes to hunting. <laughs> we won't <laughs> we're gonna let you go on so so what is bha doing specifically in this area specifically in this area mostly we just we educate about access being responsible landowners and advocating for you know fair chase ethical hunting um so that you don't butt heads with people and, and lose access. Um, that's more of my role. Some things that we do, I mean, we put on events. We try to connect with people like you um, to get the word out. But we also do things like today we went on a hike. Matt probably just talked about this, but we did. No, nope, um, we didn't hear about it. Oh. What did you guys do this morning? <laughs> <laughs> we did a... Um, we hike to hunt event where we just in, invited people to come and go for a hike on a piece of public land here. We did the Bald Mountain Preserve land and um, about nine people showed up and we had some people from Trust for Pu- Public Land come and just had some good conversations and good company and um, got to spend some time in the woods together. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. No. Good. So how do you feel about bait and bear? How do I feel about yeah. it personally? <laughs> well, personally, I'm going on my third year of bear hunting. Nice. So. Well, you said something. You said something about ethically, you know, harvesting animals and fair chase. And I just think a lot of people out there that think that public lands are, should be, you know, it all should be public land. I think that's going to be one of the fights that you have. Who decides what's ethical hunting and who decides what's not? Right. I mean, yeah. everybody has their their choice, um, what they think is ethical and what they don't. And honestly, I started hunting bear three years ago, and it was something that I initially struggled with. I thought, there's people in my personal family who don't like bear hunting. They're, they still say, how could you do something like that? Yeah. And it's one of those crucial conversations that you need to learn how to have. And is are you going to be able to live with your own decisions? And... I mean, we think about it in a wildlife management way and, you know, what are um, the experts saying about it? And um, for me, I personally think that in Maine it is an ethical way to harvest an animal. So here's, 
his the key thing for me. So now those people that might think it's unethical have a picture in their head of the person that they think is this unethical bear hunting person, right? Mm -hmm. And then they meet somebody that looks like you or me or, you know, we're all... No, cut, you can't compare the people. two, Lee. No, but I'm, what I'm <laughs> saying is, look unethical. Is, is now <laughs> your friends and your family look at you and say, okay, she's a bear hunter, not the picture I had in my head. So maybe it's not so bad. Do you see what I'm saying? So we got to get more people in match, right? The more people that we get to sit down at the table and talk about controversial things, the more things get worked out. Right. In this day and age, it's just easier to argue with people and not do that. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, my big thing is if we can find people like yourself that are avid bear hunters and can convince people that, listen, I do this. I'm not that evil ogre person that you think I am. That's going to open up their minds. Right. So I think that's a good thing. that. I think I, I like to share, you know, not just the kill shot either or the picture mm. of the bear, but what I do with it. Right. You know, I render the fat and I make oil out of it. You know, I'll make an apple pie with a bear fat crust, you nice. know. <laughs> I love it. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Make asobuco with the sh- bear shanks. And I, I share those pictures as well. Right. And I try to share them next to the bear so people can compare the two. You know, right. there is an, an ending to this and it's food on the table. Right. Yeah. Hey, so, good. Jess, are you single? No, I'm with a Rangely boy. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was going to say... Cause You're married you, too, Al. What are you doing? <laughs> I was going to say, if you if you weren't, you will be after... You won't be after this podcast. <laughs> so, so what I love about it is, is, it, is uh, number one, I always like to see females getting involved in hunting, especially to the extent that, that you are, as far as not just going out and hunting, but what's done after. And, you know, I've got a... a a uh, 22 year old daughter that is right into it, loves it, lives for it. You know, you're sitting here talking about what you do. Uh, Chip, who's the owner here at Furbush, came out, and their daughter is, you know, right into it, loves it. You know, and I, I just, I think they said she was 17, and I just, that's a great direction to be going when you're getting, right. when you're getting women involved to the extent that it is now. And and uh, I think to Lee's point, I think it was a valid. A, a really valid point. For once, Lee said something that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it takes me a minute to think of this yeah. shit, you know. Yeah. No, but I mean, it's it's uh, you know, it's the face that people put to bear hunters, and you know, everyone's image is a uh, fat slob redneck sitting on a stand over a pile of donuts waiting for a bear to come, and and mm-hmm. they are out there too, but hunting is a uh, uh, bear hunting with bait in Maine. If you know anything about it is essential um and and that's why the antis are pushing so hard right now yeah. to phase out bait because they even know that it's essential and you can't just take the bait away and let them go well the thing is is that we're not even the biologists say we're not even killing the amount of bears that need to be to keep it under control we're not, we're not going to no with the hunting numbers the way they are yeah right? there's less and joe hunters. joe do you have anything against rednecks I am one, Lee. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> and I'm a fat slob, too. So. Do you bear hunt? <laughs> Not much, but oh. I do. I don't really get He baits. Yeah. <laughs> he, couldn't, he can't do it because the, the donuts never get in the barrel. No, I eat them all before they get there. <laughs> oh, shit. But, no, it's, um, but it, it's, bear hunting is a good place to start because it's the most controversial thing out there when it comes to, to hunting in this area between the baiting and the hounds. Um, you know, it's just it's one of those things that, unfortunately, it even gets hunters pitted against hunters. And, and right. you know, in my opinion, we can never do that. No. You know, we all have to, we all have to stick together. Right. It's one of them pills that you just have to swallow if you don't agree with something. You know, I think... Like the ice fishing thing, I'd like to see some of this area opened up to ice fishing, but you're going to fight with the fly fishermen, you know yeah. what I mean? But it's a pill that you're going to have to swallow just to keep what we got. And yeah. All right. Well, our Matt is our director, and although Jess has been very interesting to talk to, and we yeah. could sit and talk all day, he's pushing you out of here. Uh, he's he's a taskmaster. He's giving you the uh, hook, Jess. 
But okay, listen, I just want to say yeah. one thing. Right. Okay. You can We've say got... whatever you want. You the heck with Matt. The heck yeah. with Matt. You say whatever you want. <laughs> Go to backcountryhuntersandanglers.org. Look at our missions and our values. Um, look what it takes to become a member if you're interested. And you can go to the New England chapter and see what kind of events we have coming up. And we've got some good ones. So nice. take a what, look. What are they? Real? Well, we've got, let me make sure I get it right, the Five Stand Shoot at L.L. Bean Fog Farm on August 27th and September 20th. This is a um, shotgun event to help get people's skills tuned in for the upcoming bird season. Nice. So I could use that. Come on out. That so good. So after this season, when you track down your 200-pounder, you're going to come back and be on the podcast and tell us oh, your story? Oh, I would love that. All right, good. <laughs> you got to get on the Garmin with us so you can just send me a message and say, hey, come drag my deer because... Hey, you know, right I thought valley. about that. I was I was <laughs> talking with Matt earlier because I was talking to him about his video of dragging the lo- log across his yard, <laughs> prepping for dragging deer. And I said, "There's no, there's no way I can drag deer out of the woods. I'm gonna have to just throw out that patch and yeah. pretend I'm out west and pack it out on my back." But <laughs> I'm sure you'll find someone to help you. Oh, everybody <laughs> loves to drag deer. Yeah, yeah, everybody loves to drag deer. Well, thanks for being on with us. Yeah. And yeah, thank you, Jess. Keep Absolutely. at the mission. We'll see you around town. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah. All right. Hey, it's Hal here. I want to talk to you about a new partnership we have with Yokohama Tires. And uh, at Big Woods Bucks, we don't take our partnerships lightly. Uh, we focus on things that we can use and uh, can believe in and trust. And, and uh, I've been running a set of the uh, Yokohama Geolander MTs for... Uh, Oh, about a month now. And uh, over the years, we've had a lot of trouble in the woods, you know, with gravel roads, shale roads, and flat tires and stuff. And and uh, so I tried these tires out on a moose hunt, and uh, they worked fabulous. You know, I had no problems with them and uh, still testing them. But the thing I like, too, is I made a trip to New York, and they're, they're for a mud tire, they're extremely quiet on the road. Probably the most quiet ones I've had for an aggressive tread tire. And uh, so I'm going to keep at testing them here, but uh, I think they're going to be the ticket. I've I've used dozens of different tires over the years, and these look like they're going to be the ticket. So anyways, the, the tires are made right here in the USA down in Virginia, all the light tires, light truck and car tires. Uh, well, there's like 51 sizes available. And they also have a Geolanda XAT as a new tire that it's a little less aggressive, like more of an all-season radial. So anyways, check out their website, Yokohama Tire, and see if it's something you can use. Hey, everyone. Hal here. Just want to take a minute to talk a minute about uh, the Woodman Arms muzzleloader. We uh, we got them all set on the website to build your own and uh, or buy your... Uh, Big Woods Bucks model, either one you want to do. But anyways, we've tested a lot, and it's I can honestly say it's the most accurate muzzle loader on the market, best to carry in the Big Woods or anywhere else at five and a half pounds. You can't go wrong with it. So get on there and check it out. Got something against rednecks? <laughs> like I said, I, I, I is one. It is one. All right. All right, that's a tough act to follow now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> going to be rough for you brent oh good you're going to have to get up a little closer to your mic okay yeah definitely. you'll hear yourself can right, you hear yep. yourself i can hear myself all right mm-hmm. good welcome <laughs> you're going to introduce him al <laughs> you are the host <laughs> I was did you not up. do your homework i can barely read i didn't bring my glasses i can barely read this fine print i think it's all 11 right. font yeah uh-huh. Brent West is here with us. He's with the oh, High okay. Peaks Alliance. Okay, I can see that. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> All right. So, so are you from the area too, Brent? Yeah, I grew up in uh, New Portland over the mountains there. Uh, yep. Yeah. We just parents came through there. And, yeah, no, it's a uh, it's nice country. Not much going on. Just uh, some big woods. Yep. So what's your big project you're working on over there? Uh, so, yeah, the High Peaks Alliance is working with the Trust for Public Land, um, trying to conserve Shiloh Pond. It's 215 acres with a beautiful trout pond right in the middle of it. And uh, we've been working for about a year to raise some funds. Uh, so that could be a town community forest. It was uh, owned by a family for hundreds of years, and uh, we, everyone's stored the boats there, fish there. 
And when it came on for sale, a bunch of the community members reached out and said, you know, is there anything we can do to make sure this place stays ours and doesn't turn into camp lots or has a big, you know, yeah. big house on it or something? Yeah. So and it's, it's going well? Uh, yeah, we're doing, uh, doing pretty good. We got a grant from the Maine Natural Resource Conservation Program. Uh, that's a mitigation program. So some, someone develops some land, fills in some wetland. Um, they have to pay a fee for that, and that turns into grant funds for conservation. Uh, so we were awarded a $336,000 grant uh, for that, and we've mm. raised about another $160,000 on top of that. Um, and we're just right down to the wire here. We're within the last about $10,000 we need to raise. And um, right now, as we speak, the meat eater um, is doing a auction, um, selling off some of their equipment to help benefit this. So we've been really grateful for some of the support we've been seeing. Nice. nice. So if any of our listeners wanted to send you a check, where would they send it? Um, you can. There's an online forum to become a member of the High Peaks Alliance. You could also reach out direct to us. Um, my email is brent at highpeaksalliance.org, um, and we can we can get in touch there. Nice. Are you a 501C? or? Yeah, we're a 501C3, um, nice. charitable donations. And uh, we really pride ourselves to be the local voice here up in the high peaks of maine so it's 10 of the 14 tallest mountains in maine yeah. right in this region and uh the most of it is privately owned woodlands um which has been great like when i grew up in new portland uh strickland mill employed 60 people i literally waiting waiting on the uh, school bus watched the last employee walk into that mill and it closed down um and those landowners are leaving now there's a big transition in land ownership in this region um, to mostly investment owners. Um, like a big landowner in this area is uh, Beirut, and they are part of Yale's endowment. And so, you know, that's a little different than like when Strickland's on the land. You could go down there and say, hey, you mind if I have bear bait? You mind if I go put a tree stand up? You just can't really get a hold of landowners anymore like you used to. They're just not part of the community. Right. So yeah. now that you've got this pretty well wrapped up with this Shiloh Pond, you, is there anything else you're looking at around here? Um, well, yeah, we, uh, we, we try to work with all the different uh, conservation organizations that identify this area as high value. So like the Nature Conservancy thinks this is a very climate resilient landscape. And that means they really want to grow trees. They want to have a carbon bank. But locally, we want to make sure when they conserve a property, we keep the snowmobile trails, we keep the ATV trails, we make sure uh, the trails we've used for generations are protected in that process. So um, they wouldn't really have that knowledge because they're just coming in and working with the landowner, conserving it. Um, so that's, that's uh, kind of how we go between. So right now, there's a few projects they've submitted for forest legacy easements. Um, and part of that is we reach out to the community and we help. Uh, we've mapped all the motorized trails up here, so we give them that data um, and put it in there. So just just like two days ago, the Nature Conservancy just closed on 9,000 acres up in uh, by Coben Gore. It's all of Merrill Strip, um, and that's on a BA preserve uh, that's mostly forever wild, uh, meaning that they're on a probably not do too much timber management. It's it's tall mountain stuff. That the, is that the piece that goes all the way up to Beatty? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's all Merrill Strip. It so it's pretty much that. It's Coben Gore. Mountain, that area? Well, it goes along, right along the border, and it runs up behind Smart Mountain, and it, it comes right up the borders Beatty. Mm-hmm. Going into the Beatty, it's Beirut. It, they must be bought it from Beirut. Uh, yeah, it was Beirut property. Yeah. And um, they... It's actually right where that corridor is trying to go through, too, right at the north end of that. Um, and that's already been a right-of-way for them, so that wasn't anything they could work on. So the corridor, so, so the corridor is going through Beatty, so, but Merrill Strip is south of yeah. Beatty, right? Yeah. It's coming. I guess they either bought the rights or bought the land in the southern part of Beatty, and that's how that corridor would get through okay into maine and then it's going to go then it goes right on to warehouse land huh 
Yeah. So 9,000 acres they, they're buying there. Yeah, and I think they closed on it, um, and they're working in other parts of this area. One, one area that's really important to us is called the Bargeon Basin, and that's the land that abuts uh, Mount Abram on the Madrid side. It's about 6,000 acres, um, great moose habitat. Uh, you'll be talking to Roger Lambert after this. He's guided up there for 30 years. Um, so it's been, it's been cut hard, but it's a beautiful, huge area that is just awesome for hunting. That's Hilton land right now, isn't it? Uh, no, that's Beirut also. That is it? Yeah. Yep. So who manages Beirut's land? Do you know? Seven uh, Islands? Y- no, uh, American Forest Management. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, no. AFM. No, AFM does some of the other lands. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Wagner yeah. does the majority of Beirut's. Wagner, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and that's like you were saying before, it used to be you could just call the landowner and then... Now it's you call Land whoever management. is the representative yep. of Wagner or right. AFM or whatever. And yeah, and, and they have a model where it's usually local foresters. Um, but so there's a little bit of give and take of knowing, like, who's going to be working there. But then there's a chain of command, and then they don't own the land. They're managing it. So right. there's a little bit of this. A little bit I of deal that. with it constantly with a snowmobile club, and Joe does too. And some days it's easy, and some days it's not. So. <laughs> Well, yeah, and that's like a dual-edged sword. We've, we've done a lot of work with uh, motorized clubs because people don't realize when they're coming up here by the thousands in the winter that it's like five local guys that have taken care of 30-plus miles of trail, and yeah. they do a lot of work. And or 110 miles of trail. Uh, <laughs> or 168 yeah. miles of trail. Well, we view like ATV, like when we started, we really wanted to be inclusive to all uses because I feel... Uh, the hunting community a lot of times feels like we've paid our license fees, uh, you know, we've done our part, and mm. really the most benefit of getting that side of the equation in on conservation is you have a voice, you can put in what the land should be managed for. It, it's more of a community effort then, and people, people start learning like these hunters and fishermen really care about the land, and that's, that's where I come from. I started out... Um, going to wildlife ecology at university of maine because honestly i hunted i fished and i saw that like some of the rules and laws didn't make any sense to me and i wanted to know what what kind of science went into that and that's why i got involved because i said you know hunters and fishermen should be have a part should have a part in the management of what you know we care about you know and that's why i did it that's a good reason to do it yeah (laughs) Yeah. because some Yeah. Cool. No, I think it's important as long as everybody has access. You just, I don't think we can discriminate against any sportsman, whatever this. It's just responsible use. You know, that's the way I look at it is, you know, as long as you're not causing harm, uh, you know, what's what's the damage? As long as you have responsible trails, good access. um, You know, with, with hunting, too, I think there's a little bit of you don't want other people on your hunting spot. So conservation's hard because by default, it's on open it to other people. But the thing we're seeing right now is, especially during this coronavirus, people are buying land like crazy. Uh, there's 1,700 acres next to Mount Blue, um, and that was listed for three months, already under contract, and it was listed as like a kingdom lot retreat. So I don't know what's going to happen with that land, but uh, we have been seeing a lot more posted signs popping up. Wow. So I got a question. So who maintains the trails on public land? Once the public owns it, in a sense, who takes care of that maintenance? Well, it really spreads the gamut depending on, like, if it's a hiking trail, it's a bike trail, it's a, you know, motorized trail. A lot of times there's a club associated yes. with it. Otherwise, it's either, like, state park staff or Bureau mm-hmm. Land Management staff. Yep. So who manages? So. You buy 10,000 acres, and I get a snowmobile trail that goes through it, and I get to replace three bridges, and I need to put an excavator in there and, and, and do some work. Where do, I get, where do I send the application for the excavation permit? Do I send it to the Land Bureau of Management? Or? Well, as a club, you know, if you're doing a stream crossing, there's mm-hmm. a thing called a permit by rule, and a lot of times that will cover you for a lot of things. But it, it, there is a lot of intricacy in in permitting in the state of Maine and land use regulation. So it's really good to actually just reach out to the agencies. You know, IFNW has landowner relations wardens. They'd be more than happy to work with you. You know, there's a state of Maine ATV 
uh, rap and a snowmobile rap. So both of those guys would be good places to start to say, what do I need to do as a club? So how about, I think what Lee was getting at is, is that land then become part of the Bureau of Public Lands where their foresters manage the, the wood and all that? Are you talking about conservation in general or, or no, when? No, when you buy these lands, uh, is it, they're now called, they're public lands, but somebody has to maintain them or oversee them or? Well, just to dive into that a little bit, Hal, is the, when there's a conservation organization, so we're talking about the Nature Conservancy, Trust for Public Land, it gets really complicated, but usually there's a lead organization, and a lot of times states partner with them. So um, good example is like the tumble down area by us. It's all Bureau of Parks and Land. That's different than state parks. So when that was conserved, Trust for Public Land and the Nature Conservancy helped raise the fund with the understanding the state would own it. So when it's a Bureau of Parks and Land, the state's responsible for it. They do the timber management based off um, their management plans, and that money helps fund the Bureau of Parks and Land. And so, you know, there's other stuff like the Nature Conservancy can own its own property, and then they're managing it themselves. And in a lot of cases, they make um, payment in lieu of taxes, stuff like that. So it, it all depends on who's the owner, whether it's the state or an actual, like, nonprofit. Yep. I'm okay. just asking because, like, that's going to happen eventually to me, and I just want to be able to say, oh, I'm just going to call yeah. so-and-so. Well, there's also a lot of land up here protected by forest legacy easements, like thousands of acres, and that's still that private landowner, but there's an easement held by either the state or a conservation organization mm-hmm. that is, um, you know, uh, it holds the development rights so they can't develop it. They usually offer access. It usually guarantees, like, foot access, hunting access. Um, like, Lands for Maine Future is a great example. All those projects protect hunting, fishing, and trapping rights. Nice. All right. Good insight. Well, thank Excellent. you. Thank you very much, Brent, for yeah, joining us. Yeah, thanks for having and, me. Yeah. And sharing that. And uh, just uh, do a shout out if uh, any guys are interested in the High Peaks Alliance. It's the highpeaksalliance.org. And I really appreciate you guys having me. And I just yep. hope more hunters and fishermen try to get into the conservation scene. We really need to hear your voice. Yep. Yeah. Sounds thank good. You. Excellent. We're, we're thank spreading you, the word as we speak. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Okay. All right. Hey, guys, Joe here. Wanted to take a few minutes to talk about. Lake Parlin Lodge. We're a uh, four-season lodge located just south of Jackman. We've got cabins, lodge rooms, mini lodge. We're a big snowmobile destination in the winter, full restaurant, bar, all the amenities that you need for your trip. Open all, obviously, through the summer, right on the lake. Kayaks, canoes, all included with the cabin. We also do a lot of weddings, so if you're looking for a destination wedding, we can do a wedding up to 200 people. And, uh, of course, we've got our hunting season, moose season, deer season, so check us out. We're at lakeparlinlodge.com. Hey, Hal, here. Just want to take a minute to talk about the hunting club. And uh, you can join by going right online at uh, bigwoodsbucks.com. But anyways, I've got uh, all my information is going in there. And it's a place where you can get together and and uh, look at my films, tips, writings, and all of that. And the best part is is, is, is forums for you to communicate with you know, the rest of the club members talk about Big Wood stuff and all of that. So anyways, 36 bucks a year, cheaper than getting a Starbucks once a day. So join up and hope you see you're on there. All right. Who's next? The legendary. The legendary. It's last but not least, the famous, or I should say infamous, Roger Lambert (laughs) from Wilton, Maine. (laughs) Hal, I'm kind of quiet and shy, but I'll do the best I okay. can. Okay, I knew you were. I was, I was trying to just tune you up a little bit. I was actually just thinking, I can't believe it's been this long for Roger to be on the podcast. I know. Legendary moose We, we are talking about moose, aren't we? I mean, no, no. That's all. Yeah, that's what we're here for. That's what you came for, isn't it? No, no. This, this is con- I, I was tickled to death that Matt got this ball rolling. I guess he did, or you fellas, but... This conservation, oh, this conservation piece is long overdue, and, and our, the sportsmen that we are need, need to have a heads up on this and pay attention and get involved because it's just going to happen with or without us. It better happen with us. We need to be at the table, and uh, right. yeah, I'm, glad, I'm glad you guys are doing this. Yeah, yeah. excellent. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of changes in the, 
North Main Woods here in the last 20 years. Yeah, we're, we're a little different, Hal, down here, a little southern, a little south of you. You know, we've got the medium-sized landowners, right. and we're seeing the gates and the boulders, you know, and, and a lot of them are justified because of how much their property's been disrespected, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, yeah. So we, we, we get this, and now, now the next step is what do we do and how do we come involved, and we need to saddle up just... Example, Brent was talking with you about our High Peaks Alliance that we developed here in the Western Mountains. Uh, years ago, there was a senator here that, re- that introduced myself to Lloyd Griscom, who was, he's a non-consumptive guy, he's a hiker and, and this and that. And, and, Lo- and Tom was struck by being friends with both of us and how we spoke of a particular piece of land and how much we loved it and was fond of it and thought of the potential. And he knew we needed to know each other. And, you know, Lloyd and I sit at the table, 80% of the stuff we agree on. So, so to heck with the 20%. Let's, let's saddle up, you know, and, and, and work together on the 80% and, and get the best deal we can get, be at the table. And uh, that, that's what we hope to do. And we've been successful at that to a point. We've got a couple big aces in the hole up here we're working on. But uh, if, the, if the softwood pulp market doesn't collapse and we lose our appraisal value, we, we, <laughs> the, the Nature Conservancy is working on a, on a deal up here for us. And oh, nice. It's got to happen. Yeah. yeah, good. Yeah, well, glad you're part of it too. You're probably the spearhead down this way, ain't you? No, no, not really. But I'm a player. I'm the, I'm, <laughs> I'm at the table. I, I listen, listen, old moose hunter. We want to be at the table, and uh, you know, there's w- there's so much opportunity here. This uh, we we can we can figure this out, and what we can't figure out, we'll, we'll shove off to the side. But there's plenty of room. And we all like the same stuff as the non-consumptive people. And uh, they're, they're, they're settled up. They're involved. They're active. You know, they, they write checks, right? They do. And they work on this stuff. And we've been lazy, you know, and, and we can't do that anymore. If we, want, if we want ground, we need to be involved. We need to be supportive. We need to, be, we need to pay attention. We need to be on the switch. And we as a group, I speak from the hunters because I don't waste my time fishing. But... <laughs> 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 I mean, you know, you just just think about that. Do I hunt or do I fish? Do I hunt or I fish? You know, it's no brainer. But I, I, I'm a working man, so I, I'm I, actually with you, Roger. Yeah, on I, this mean, one. I mean, know, not, not yeah, to say I don't enjoy fishing, yeah, but you got to pick and choose. Yeah, you, you know, guys are in the wrong town like, to be like, talking like, that. Like these fellas hunting partridges, you know, these you know, pat, 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 these partridges or, or turkeys. You know, they're just fat partridges. You know, wasting time that when you can hunt a moose or a bear. Come on. You know the difference between a partridge and a grouse, right? I just, I guess, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, the partridge is shot on the ground. <laughs> is, there, is there some other way to shoot them? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, um, I, I really think that we, we, I'm glad you guys are doing this because there's some people listening to this probably that just have been sitting on the sidelines and, and that, that, that day has passed. We, we, we've actually really need to saddle yeah. up. And, uh, well, what I see... Us old fellows there, Roger, mm-hmm. what I see is we, we've taken it for granted for so we long. We have. We've been spoiled rotten. Spoiled. You know, there was always plenty of place to go, and we just took it for granted it would always be there. And it's looking like the way changes are, that could slip away for us. Yep. Yep. I think we're the last, I think we're the only state probably now that has, still has the policy of open use on private land that it's always been. I don't, yeah. you know, hunters coming from other states can't even believe it. They, they think, because they ask me, and they probably ask you too when you moose hunting, you know, you hunt on private land or you hunt on public land. Well, we hunt on private land because there's hardly any public land. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, they can't believe it. Yeah, you and I know how the sports have been telling us for years, for twenty years. Down in Pennsylvania, we'll take that for example. Uh, they have the hunt clubs. They've had to do it. A bunch of hunters are bound together, purchased a lease on a piece of property, and and have a little lodge that they swap out and they, they they rotate out of. But that's how they had to do it to get land to hunt on. And they said they could, as, as I agree with you. They said they were giving us a heads up years ago. They said, you know, this is coming your way, and you know. We're not so far from it, so so let's let's jump in. Let's let's get after it. I mean, yeah. Yep. yeah. And I think, fortunately, you know, Nature Conservancy has come up over and over here in this conversation about what they're doing, and I think they see Maine as this is ripe to save. You yep. know, and, yep. and so they're 
they're yeah. kind of leading the charge, yeah. being part of it. Yeah. Don't be don't be afraid of the non-consumptive people. You know, they haven't understood us. Help them understand us. Preach the gospel to them. One of the things I like to do is on the food side. When I tell them there's 350 tons, 350 tons of high protein, low fat, chem free meat go into the New England ladder every year from just the moose hunt, they roll their eyes back. That's local food, baby. It doesn't get any better than that. And there's a trend on that. So when you tell them, you extrapolate that over 10 years, 3,500 tons of high protein, low, they get that and they understand that. They share to neighbors, friends, relatives, and that kind of stuff. So connect with them like that. They don't have to do that. We need to educate them, help them understand that. And, and we all, we're in this together. We really are. Yep. We, we, and we, we need to support each other. And, and uh, if, like I say, if we quarrel over where a trail goes or what kind of equipment can go over it or whatever, so what? Let's jump in on the good stuff, which you know, is pretty obvious as a nose on your face to a lot of places, you know, the things we can do. We need to get into that. Another component that I think about, because my son runs an outfitting business in Colorado, is the equine component. You know, that sounds like nothing, but in the planning stages of stuff, you know, there might be some equine activity, and you got to figure that stuff out. And it's not easy. It's hard. But it's worth spending time on. It's worth being interested in. And, and you can either, you can be proactive, Active or reactive, and baby, I want to be on the front side of that. So, yeah, this yeah, is what you've got we a great do. outlook on it, Roger. <clears throat> really, yeah. yeah. My son, you know, works in the West, where what is seventy percent public lands out there, you know, and it's a, almost a reverse dichotomy to what, what the hell right. we got going on here. And uh, you know, we we got to pay attention here because it's very tenuous here, and, yep. and now's the time. Yeah, I've got a stupid question. <clears throat> so, if the Public lands buy, say the state buys a piece of land through whatever conservancy. Do we still pay taxes on it, or does the state lose that tax revenue? It, it, it depends what kind of arrangement, whether it's an outright purchase, a fee, fee purchase, or the best of every world is a conservation easement. And perhaps Brent talked to you about conservation easements. Conservation easements, uh, big landowners, let's say Linkletter, somewhere here in the Western Mountains, and we were able to accomplish that down here. They had a 5,000 acre piece. We, we bought, we put together a coalition and some grants and bought the conservation easement. They they gave up the, the rights to the to the, the to control reg, uh, recreation. We can recreate on it now. That's not to say if they've got a logging operation up on this 150, 200 acres, we have to go around it for a year or two or whatever it takes. But they gave up the development rights and the recreational rights, and that's the best of both worlds because some of these outfits bought those at fire sale price, right? right? And they're getting as much for the damn conservation easements as they had to pay for the property. Plus, they've been, you know logging it for years with uh, sustainable forestry. So the conservation easement is perfect, and that way it stays in, it stays in taxation at a reduced rate because they, they don't have the yep. whole gamut. Uh, but yeah. that's everybody wins there. Everybody wins. The owner wins. There's still tax money, you know, probably in tree growth, the tree growth tax money. Right. We, we'll take it, right? Yeah, and and then the there. recreational people get the opportunity. That the conservation easements is a wonderful knitting piece up through these uh, acreages we have in the western mountains. And I'm sure up north, same deal. Yeah. Hmm. The, yep. the only uh, – <laughs> We have a big one out right out behind Parlin, on the conservation easement that was done with Plum Creek when they owned it. Now Warehouser owns the property. It was done as a part of uh, the Moosehead. Um, yeah, that big the plan. The Moosehead plan, yeah, that yep. they just actually withdrew. Yes. But um, the only, and this is just a personal thing because of the way I feel about it, but the only drawback on that conservation easement is it was specifically allows wind development. And, yeah, it, you know, it, everything's yeah. and they've got it. You know, it's a give and take, like you said. Now, whether that gets developed or not, we'll see in the current climate. But, yeah. um, it, you know, it's uh, it's better than not having it. <laughs> yeah. It's better than yeah. than it getting developed and every lot around the lake yeah. you and, know, and, getting and gobbled up. Yeah. And one would ask, were there enough of us at the table? Were we were we active enough? Right. Were we, were we on it? What did we do? What did we do? Yeah. And, and lots of bitch about and it. And lots of times we do nothing until bitch about the yep. gate of the road goes up. So that, those yep. days are over, partners. If you want to want to go out and play in the woods, <laughs> you can't well, lick them, join them, you know? Really, that's where it's at. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So I can just put gates up and people assume they can't go there anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Lee's always oh, got the, the angle. 
Yeah. There's one in every crowd. <laughs> Hal told me you just drop spruce trees across the road. And then yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I want to give a plug for your new book, Roger. Of course I do, Hal. That's why yeah. I'm here now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Pizza no, and no. a plug. But, you know, <laughs> no, just a quick word. We, uh, I'm a moose hunter. A lot of people know that. I love the, love the deal. And wait you, a minute. You, now, you, wait, wait, yeah. Roger. You're not just a moose hunter. Yeah. Probably I, or maybe I, I got, I got, I got, I, I, I guide a little bit. But anyway, yeah. years, years ago, I was on the on seminar circuit before they fired me and hired Hal. But anyway, <laughs> they, uh, there was a guy, there was a guy came up, and I won't mention his name. Uh, his initials are Lonnie Humphrey. But Lonnie, <laughs> Lonnie, 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 Lonnie came up, you know. And after I done, did a seminar, and I'm not a very emotional guy or very, very deep. You can see that real quick. And he got a little teared up, a little emotional. You know, what's this going about? And he, he threw back at me how important the moose hunt was to him and his family it's different than a bear hunt deer hunt grouse hunt you know it's it's an old tribal thing it's bringing home the bacon you know it's a phenomenon The, the main moose hunt is a phenomenon and we recognized no one had written a book about that or you know we said let's do it so i just wrote a little stuff but we went out and recruited a bunch of guides of family people and and hunters that really loved the game and there's a bunch of regular hunter family kind of guys that are as good at it as as some of the guides that say they are you know because they're so interested i know guys been on 20 moose hunts i mean they haven't pulled the trigger baby but they've 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 gutted them and dragged them and stirred the biscuits and all that stuff, fed the fires. You know, you, if you want to go on a moose hunt, chummy, talk your way on. You know, all, all, <laughs> all, 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 yeah, all a permit does right. give you an excuse to pull the trigger. There's a lot of fun to be had, you hey, know. Hey, social media has helped that out a lot because I see... Yeah. constantly, you know, people putting that out. Hey, anyone need help? Yeah. Everyone, everyone just wants to go I'm on your, a moose hunt. Yeah, and I've got a free camp up north yeah. you can stay in. You right, know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So where are you moose hunting this fall? What do you got going on? I have no idea. but <laughs> No, but uh, anyway, so away we went, and uh, we've thrown the book out there, and it's been well received, and we're glad for it. So, yeah. What's I'm, I'm retired. I'm, I'm too old to moose hunt. I just. So I, you're not going on any moose hunts this year? No. You're so full of it. Come well, on. there's some people around that have asked questions, yeah. <laughs> and there might have been some X's on some DeLorms, and, you know, now no pressure. You know, for 25 years, I was in the stew pot, baby. It was, you know, what's Roger's bull going to look like this year, his people? But anyway, I'm, I'm glad I'm out. I'm old, old news, by the way. I'm just a couple years old in Hal, but I, I, know, I, know enough, I know enough when to retire, Hal. No. <laughs> Hal's got Hal's got 10 years to go, and he's young and tough on I. Uh, but anyway, but anyway. So what's the name of this book? It's called the Great Maine Moose Hunt, and if you Google up Great Maine Moose Hunt, it'll take you to a website. If you wanted to throw in, you could probably get one. And um, we we think that there's a lot of good stories in there, and some of them are true, you know. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> and it's got 125 color pictures. And uh, the good the yeah. goodly, which is Lee Shans. Yeah, 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 yeah. We he's had at least one yeah. good guy, the goodly. Yeah, <laughs> the goodly. Yeah. He gave me one last week. And I really enjoy the book. Well, it's really good. I'm glad. Yeah. I'm glad you do. And uh, we had some great people. Uh, Lee Cantor, the uh, our, our moose biologist, did a nice piece in there. And and uh, there's there's some good stories in there. And we think it represents the great Maine moose hunt, which is a phenomenon. And uh, if you haven't been on a Maine moose hunt, figure a way to get in. Whether you whatever role you play, it's a it's a beautiful time of year in main foliage you know the yeah. weather's oh, nice geez, yeah. jump, it, it's, jump on a moose hunt. it's yeah. the uh i mean no it's the closest anyone's ever to get to an alaska hunt in the lower 48 number it, it, one it is and uh yep. you know anyone that hasn't been on one and felt the excitement i mean I, a lot of people have never moose hunted think it's oh it's just so easy you just go out and it's like shooting a broadside of a barn but it, we all know it's a lot different than that when you get out there and especially and, nowadays uh, that's yeah, that wee bit smarter than they used yeah. to be, you know. And but, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we all, I mean, just yeah. love it. If you go out and do it, you understand what we're you're talking about. So. The great, great Maine moose hunt. The great Maine moose hunt. Yeah, is that yep. all? So Roger. now you'll probably sell another five, six thousand copies. You go. You've got them in you stock. Go. We're yeah. almost ready to break even on the book. <laughs> 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 that was our goal from the start, you know. Whatever. So the the printer called me up. And he said, "How many books you boys want?" I said, "I don't know. We're hunters. We didn't moose hunters. We don't know." And he said, "I said I think we could sell five or six hundred, you know, in a two Christmas cycles." And he said, "Well, you ought to get a price on a thousand. So he gave us a price on a thousand, and we, I said, "Well, that's all right, and we'll take it." And then he said, "You want to know what the second thousand would cost?" And 
thousand because I had to add, ask yes. And he said half what the first thousand cost. Wow. So long story <laughs> short, I had two thousand seventy five books show up in my garage, baby. Shipping weight nineteen hundred and seventy six pounds. That's pretty damn close to a ton when I went to school, right? So when I tell people we got a ton of books to sell, that's right. And I got to thank Hal Blood. You know, I hate to, but. <laughs> <laughs> Hal, my friend Hal uh, uh, introduced us to a gal that put the book together for us, and, and that was a godsend, and I uh, appreciate that, Hal. Yeah, and she's good. She's, yeah. she's great. So any of you want to write a book out there, we're so damn excited about this. We're starting a publishing company called Backcountry Publishing. No, and we've, got a, we've got a ladies' book in mind, and we're, we're going to do some of this. In retirement, you know, I've got to do something, don't I? Yeah. yeah. Can't, can't moose on anymore. I've got to yeah. write stories. <laughs> you gotta, you got to keep busy. Yeah, yeah. Can't sit around your rocking chair once no, you retire. Not me. Yeah. I'm on it. I bet you, though, Roger, you'll probably be in your truck somewhere showing up around in the woods. Well, maybe, I was thinking, maybe visiting a moose camp well, here or I there. I might. I might. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I haven't stayed home much in the last few years. Last year, our moose people went with my son, went out, played with my son out in Colorado. But this year, we're back here, and uh, we'll probably find ourselves on the hunt somewhere. Nice. Yep. All Excellent. right. You get in trouble, Hal. Thursday, Friday, call me out. <laughs> <laughs> how are you? At, yeah, how are you at packing now, Roger? Pretty no, the good. the packing, no. Just call it. I, I don't even get out of the truck anymore. I just sit in the truck, open the door, and call from the truck. <laughs> but I haven't, I haven't been able to get him to jump up in the in the body yet. But we're working on that. But anyway. no, uh-uh. no. Well, Rod, Roger, I hope this is not the last time you're on the podcast because you're a lot of fun to listen to and. Uh, whatever. But, and uh, uh, <laughs> good for you guys. I, I'm, I'm glad for you. I, Russ has a client of his that's out in Minnesota who listens to every Big Woods Bucks podcast. With, like, and, he, and his goal is to meet Hal Blood. Can you imagine a man? <laughs> no. So he's coming back. He's coming uh, this fall to hunt up here in the woods with us. And I think he said Sunday. He said, "Any chance you can scoop me up to Jackman to meet the man?" I said, "Well, maybe." Have you told <laughs> him? What, have you told him what a letdown it's going to be? Oh, <laughs> oh my God! I said, oh. I said he. Yeah, yeah. He looks yeah. a hell of a lot better in the photographs than he really does. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much left of him. But Hal always told me he had a hell of a good time getting in that condition anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Thank you, thank Roger. You, Roger. Yeah. Thanks, yeah. Roger, and thanks for being part of this BHA. <clears throat> well... We'll uh, we'll have Matt back on to wrap things up here a little bit. Yeah, he's and, been uh, he's been pounding on those Bud Lights like there's no tomorrow. I've been watching them. So yeah, it's called hydrating. I'm I'm surprised <laughs> he can even talk without slurring at this it's point. Called hydrating. <laughs> hey, and he's a physical therapist, so just bear that in mind. I'm gonna follow suit. Yeah, Mo- moderation in all things. <laughs> so, moderation in all things. So what yep. do I do about the ball on my feet? This <laughs> <laughs> Stop! Stop hiking with 125 pounds. <laughs> That'd be, yeah, that'd be the first clue. Yeah, yeah. If, it, if it hurts, don't do it. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere with that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll let the bad Lee cover that. <laughs> well, man, that was a lot of fun, Matt. Well, thanks that was for, good. Yeah. Thanks that was for doing it, guys. You guys always have fun when you come to Rainsley. You well, just hate to admit it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You almost didn't show up. Are you kidding? I was. Matt? I knew where I was supposed to be. Yeah. All right. And I was close. But yeah. Matt, great job putting this together and getting everyone lined up. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, guys. It was Thank great. I was, I was sad the uh, the folks from the Trust for Public Land couldn't be here. Um, there they were a couple gals that came on the hike, and they're just not allowed to come inside due to their jobs uh, for events. But they really fund a lot of conservation work, and they were really keen on being able to reach out to hunters and anglers. So. Um, it's nice to have them as partners. Well, maybe well, we'll do we, it again. We got a plug in for them anyway. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. And, uh, yeah. Thanks for putting it together, and we're glad we could help to get it out to uh, the audience here. And anybody listening wants to join up, BHA. Uh, what's the yeah. other one? Uh, BHA High Peaks Alliance. High Peaks Alliance. Yeah. yeah. Any of that? Go on. Check their websites and. Yeah, backcountryhunters.org is the BHA website. I'm, I don't have the yeah. High Peaks Alliance website in front of me, but they're around. It doesn't take much to find them. Yeah, any you high any you high rollers out there, maybe you want to make some donations. Right, rich uncles. Rich That's uncles, we're looking yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get, uh, this, get this land so you have big woods bucks to live on. That's right. Yeah, protect it. So any, uh, any housekeeping things we got to touch on, Hal? Yeah. Go ahead. 
I, I'm asking you. You're supposed to talk about what's the Twitter and the. Well, I wasn't necessarily touching Twitter. on that. We don't have any <laughs> updates or anything. Oh, right? update. Yeah, we do have something coming up. We can't spill the beans yet, can we, about our phone conversation? No, 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 but that's exciting. Oh, we got some new. Uh, we got a good program coming up with Big Woods Bucks here coming up pretty soon. We're going to announce it pretty soon. Yep. Oh, so we just led it all up to that, and you're going to announce yeah. it soon. Yeah. Have, have you heard anything I about it? I got some housekeeping to do. Yeah, I got some housekeeping to do. My Onyx thing app says upgrade. Who do I talk to about upgrading it? We got to find out from Chris. I'm not sure because I think yeah, mine I said contact. that too. Yeah. Oh, well, it's unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> if you're clean in house, clean up my Onyx. <laughs> yeah. Me and uh, me and Joe went out the other day and did some filming to put together a little uh, kind of like a Facebook commercial, I guess, for Onyx there. Because I found it was pretty handy for finding bear bait sites believe it or not really well because you can see you can see on the satellite imagery the kinds of trees and mo i don't think most people pick up on that you can yeah. you know the real dark that always almost looks black is yeah. the softwood and then you've got the lighter green trees that's the hardwood yeah. well bear in particular you know they want to be in that dark growth. dark yeah. black growth so you're driving down a road you don't know what's off to the side of the road especially this time of year you know if you're trying to find a place so anyways i i put in a couple of new baits this year and and i just kind of looked on the onyx and found the dark growth where i wanted to be there and went to it nice yeah voila so it's it was kind of cool so we we did a little filming with that the other day and maybe they'll use it if they like it for one of their little facebook commercials yeah. or something but <clears throat> yep so uh so as usual if you're uh, listening to us on itunes uh we definitely would appreciate it if you give us a review as long as it's a five star yeah. five five star only <laughs> One star that's the only like. kind of reviews people give <laughs> yeah but uh we always love the feedback and and uh yeah. also on youtube uh you can check us out on youtube definitely subscribe to it we're we're working hard to create more content and get more things out there because we know everyone yeah. is always anxious to see if things. you guys would let me talk about politics <laughs> <laughs> no just stop it right there yeah. then nope. we'd have a so, lot more content yeah, yeah. <laughs> no no one wants to hear your politics Lee. if they all started with the titos and crayon yeah. A lot more, <laughs> a lot more politics. You just got, cut them off. Yeah, when we yeah. get when we get emails and stuff, it's usually it's usually about Lee, the bad Lee. Yeah, yeah. something he said wrong. Yeah, yeah. And, that, and I they, don't get those. They they usually have uh, merit. <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't the good Lee draw a moose tag? Have we talked about that at all yet? Yeah, the good. Yeah, Lee we yeah. talked yeah. about that. Yeah, I, mean, had, I must have missed that one. We had. Uh, he hasn't, it hasn't been on yet. I don't think the moose. We did uh, moose biologist mm. Lee Cantor. Yeah, I that think. was on. Yeah, was I that think, on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah. just not caught up to it yet. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, we mentioned Lee. We're pulling for him. Oh, well, yeah. So, oh, I know what we can talk about is the uh, the veterans hunt. Moose oh, hunt. yeah. Yeah. Yep. Should have mentioned that when Roger was on. That's all right. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. So, uh, my wife got drawn. Deb, she got drawn for another moose permit or third. So... Most of us hate her, but um, <laughs> so anyways, when I told her she got drawn, I was looking through the list that night, you know, the drawing, and when I told her she got drawn, she just said like a blank stare, and I'm like, I thought she'd be, you know, kind of jumping up and down excited, and I'm like, I that's could how tell. You, that's how you should be when you draw a moose Right, tag, and I could excited. tell she wasn't really excited <laughs> oh. about it, and I'm like, hmm. Well, I just been putting her in. She got the last time she got drawn was I think early two thousands. It's been fifteen, eighteen years or whatever. So I didn't say nothing else, you know. And the next day, I said something about that, and I said, "Geez, you didn't seem too excited about getting a moose permit." She goes, "You know, I don't really think I want to shoot another moose." She said, "As I get older, she says I just kind of lost interest in it." I'm like, "Well, not." necessarily lost interest in the hunting end of it but she just didn't feel like she wanted to shoot another moose and i said well all right then i said why don't we you donate it to a veteran because they got the new program they started last year you can donate to a disabled veteran they could be 50 percent uh combat disabled hmm. so uh she goes yeah or i would do that 
So I said, okay. So I, I, a buddy of mine I worked with at Remington was, uh, I didn't realize he was disabled, but I, he brought some coyote hunters up once that were disabled a few years ago. So I, I got a hold of him because he put in for a moose permit this year for the first time. He was all excited about going, you know. So he didn't get drawn, and his, his buddy didn't. So I called him up, and I said, you know somebody that wanted to do this? And he goes, me. And I go, <laughs> I said, because, you know, a lot of people are disabled, but it's things that don't physically show, you know. Like he's not missing a limb or anything. So I said, all right, so. We're going to take him up to uh, be zone five. Mm. She had a zone six, but I got it traded for a five because I wanted, didn't want to be in six. It's out on the side I've never guided in. I don't want to be in. It's more on the populated side. But anyway, uh, so we got him coming for the first season. <clears throat> We're going to try to – he's going to stay in camp with Lee Shanzi because it's right on the border of five and two. And, and uh, Chris is going up and he was already planning on going up and being with uh, Lee on his hunt. And his son, Stevens, be guiding up there. And Joe's close. And then when I'm done, so we're going to make it. We're going to pull it all together, and he'll stay in Lee's camp because it's the handiest there. And then we'll uh, get him a moose. Yeah, that's going to be a great week. Yeah. Going to be a good week, yeah. Yeah. It's it's, uh, Come along if you want, Matt. Oh man, <laughs> don't don't tempt me. I just, I just put in for my deer season time off, so I'm, I might have to readjust my schedule. Oh, <laughs> are, you, are you coming up with us this year? Uh, if if there's snow in Jackman, I'd, I'd love to be up there. Excellent. Yeah, nice. Good. Soon, as soon as we get Lee over there to finish up on the guides camp, mm. we'll be all set. Yeah, that window is rapidly closing, guys. So yeah, you know, we know. I got two and a half weeks, and I'm done. So. Did you get the uh, find the water line hook up yet? No. You I said been, you were working. I on did. It. I got. I started trenching it out, and then I lost my mini again. So. Oh yeah. But. We got to get on this. Oh yeah, get right on it. It's funny, Lee. When they oh. say we, they just look at you. Yeah. <laughs> I well, liked, he's the he's I the weak where, link. I, I liked I liked where I stayed last year. I yeah. ain't no <laughs> I ain't no hurry to finish that, that old rundown cabin. Over there. <laughs> <laughs> he, he had gonna, he had one of the lodge rooms in the yeah, main lodge yeah. with a pillow top mattress. Yeah, and, yeah, I, yeah. I stayed in one of those rooms. They're yeah, fantastic. Yeah. I wouldn't yeah. change either, Lee. So tell yeah. me why I want to get that old yeah. cabin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. got him spoiled, Joe. Yeah, smell like ma- mouse. We're gonna, and, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna put him in a tent out in the yard this year. Mm. Yeah, he had uh, mints on his pillow every night. Uh, my uh, client, yeah. my client would let me sleep in their room. <laughs> well, that's the backup. That's the backup for uh, the guides is we're just going to put some wall tents up, right, and put a stove in there, and yeah. Yeah. they're all set. Yeah. Good. I'll be up to the Northland there. <laughs> <laughs> that was never a question in our mind. Like, uh. All right. All right. Well, thanks, everyone, for tuning in again. It's been fun. Summer's winding down. We got... Bear season Cut coming right shit. up. Summer's winding down. You know how much shit I got to do? <laughs> summer's winding down. For some of us, summer's yeah. winding down, and we'll be hunting oh, pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Lee, yeah, Lee's got Lee's got so much work. He's not even going to take oh. any time for deer hunting well, this I year. S- I sold my house there a couple weeks ago, so well, that's now right. I'm homeless. Yeah. He's a he's a homeless Pressure's person. Pressure's on. Pressure's on. He's got to build himself a yeah. house plus mm. ten others. I There's guess. A- there's a bunch of spots down in front of City Hall in Portland. You can pitch your tent there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That right seems to be pretty popular there. these days. Yeah. No politics, fellas. Yeah. <laughs> Chris, Chris sent me a text. He's like, keep those guys straight. Yeah. <laughs> you know how difficult that is. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Till next time, good luck on the trail.